for those of you just tuning in um, on YouTube. Uh, we, t- we basically touch on everything that we find interesting to us. And uh, Nick's not here, so I'm going to talk about something that interests me extremely. And it's uh, we talk about Anunnaki on here. We've talked about, we've even got into the, the really trying to, to break down the, you know, what, what they are and what it is. And, and we, we kind of come to a, a stopping point, uh, you know, as far as our knowledge can go. And we talk about Inky and Enlil. But tonight we've got a guy and his name is Matthew LaCroix. And he's a passionate writer. He's endowed with energetic and a kind spirit. He's uh, grown up in the outdoors in northern New England. Uh, has a strong connection to nature and uh, is firmly rooted in his, his morals in his early age and uh, his life. Uh, he spent most of his free time hiking and exploring. Uh, the nearby mountains and forests, and he has a persistence yearning for adventure that led him to a profound life-changing experience that inspired him to write for local and national magazines such as Backpacker and AMC Outdoors. Um, While attending Plymouth State University, he published his first book at the age of 22 and began researching into ancient history and philosophy. At age 32, he published a second book entitled The Illusion of Us, and uh, began appearing on radio and podcast shows all around. Matthew's currently writing his third book, as well as producing educational videos and movies on YouTube to help expand consciousness and awareness. And Matthew, I know you're there. I th- yes. We just, there you are. Fantastic. Man, thank you for joining us. And uh, I, I, so first and foremost, I want to say where I, where I first found you uh, was I was perusing through multiple I get in those YouTube black holes right like where everybody does and yeah. um I I saw a, a video that said Inky and Enlil or Enlil Inky and it, and it had to do and it had a an eagle and a snake on it I, I I'm trying to think of the thumbnail that was that represented it and so I clicked the, the, on the it. flag of Mexico okay it was the flag of Mexico that's right yeah that's right okay and so it did have an eagle and a snake there you go and uh and and I watched that video and all of a sudden all of these things started to click in my head and I was just totally blown away by this presentation that you were presenting to uh, I think it was Rex Bear on the Leak Project and um, all the uh, it's things start pieces started coming together and I was like that makes logical sense that makes logical sense this makes logical sense these things make sense all the stuff that you were saying and and I was like I I don't know how to uh I I don't know how to um not want to learn more about this and and because it's always been fascinating and I've I have kind of always grown up with a quest for truth from being a child right and yeah I hope so and uh, well, I mean, I, and I don't, I don't know if everybody has that that same, or that it gets quelled in them, but it, it's stronger in some than others. We okay. Can, we just said. And and I've always had this, and it seems like I I come to, uh, I limit myself, if you will. I'll I'll start to uh, put myself in a box, and I'll start to say, no, no, that can't be right. That can't be right. And um, and w- when I watched that video, and I know it sounds silly to a lot of people that, um you know, like, Oh, you, you find truth in YouTube, but there is truth in what you say in the research that you've done. So most everybody probably right now is like, well, we don't even know what, what this is about. This, what, what this talk is about. So why don't we do this? Why don't we, I just wanted to prime that and let you know that that's where I, that's where I found you and that, that that's our uh, backstory, right? As he right, discovered. Right. right. And so let's, let's do this. What, uh, I would imagine that you also had a quest for truth uh, in in your young life, right? And very, very deeply, yeah. It was kind of a that's kind of like you said in my bio that led me to first start writing, which uh, then led me to writing out the truths that I was being able to then uncover upon research and various others. Um, can I just say it's it's really a pleasure to be here, Michael. I really appreciate being on the show tonight with you. Yes, man. Uh, forgive me for my rudeness. I kind of just went straight into it, but yes, it, it it is a pleasure to have you here, and 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 uh, we thank you for for. Uh, I know it's been a couple. We had talked about doing this a few weeks ago, or maybe almost a month ago, and we finally get to this point. And uh, it is it's a busy time. Yeah. It's very busy. It is. It's good to have you. Well, thank you. That so that um 
The video you're talking about, that talk that I gave, was called The Battle of the Eagle and the Serpent. Yes. Um, and that that knowledge um, learned through researchers like Gerald Clark and, and many others who have delved into what this secret symbology that's kind of hiding all around us, you know, these these family crests and these flags that people proudly ride down the streets with and, and hold. And they have all these secret meanings that people have no idea what they really mean. And it turns out that with all the great lies and a lot of the things that have kind of misled us about the truth, one of the things that's actually remained surprisingly of all, maybe it's through pride because they, you know, it's, it's a, it's a proud thing to have a flag that represents kind of who you are. Right. right. Um, some of these secrets have remained intact within flags and in, in crests that actually speaks to this truth that, that you were talking about with this video that talks about, well, if there's this, um, this kind of struggle over society where with like elite families and the idea of if, if you wanted society to act a certain way and you wanted them to, to um, kind of follow the same direction, um, you could do things like instigate wars and you could con conquer different areas for resources. And so when we're learning, when we're in that video we're talking about is seeing things like um, symbology, like an eagle or something like a serpent, and then kind of following it all over the place and then saying, is that all connected? And that kind of leads us down kind of a deep rabbit hole. Yeah. And that's what the, that's what the video did. Right. And, and it is, it's funny that you, you know, you, you just put it like this and this is kind of what we talk about on this show a lot is that, you know, we do there that you do see wars, constant wars, and you do see wars for resources and you see all these things. And, and, and sometimes people just take that at face value and they say, Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's almost, it's almost become such a part of our culture and part of our nature that we just accept it now. It's just, it's, called it's, it's accepted. It's called social again. conditioning. It, it is. It, it, it's become a social condition. Uh, it's been, it's just part of our programming now that we just accept them mindlessly. Every and, kid has um, every game they play. And I, I, mean, I played them all the whole time too. I'm right. speaking from experience. All the you play is first person shooter video games where you're induced in a war. Then uh, for sports, you're watching the most violent sports possible where they're crashing to each other and, and, and trying to like max your to test testosterone level the highest point possible because we've been driven to this mentality of completely blocking off and putting it kind of like our whole society into a masculine war mentality where we don't even know that that PC really exists. I think the United States has actually been at war for 225 years straight. And, and, and people think that it's a peaceful thing because they're not all always in the battlefield. Right. Because that's not the way wars have, have changed. They, they, they've changed to a situation where it's more specialized. And so now when people don't hear about it and they just hear about the propaganda of like a, just a hero or something, they just bat an eye of, of the horrors of what's actually happening. Right. You know, and it's just the, the Syri Syrian conflict has claimed, I think it's up to a million people now have died. It's unreal and it's unreal and it's and and to be honest nobody knows what's happening right nobody understands right. it 100 percent. everybody speculates oh they say these people are in this they, these people are in this but i mean it's accepted it's accepted it's and it shouldn't be accepted but more on i mean more on more on back to the ancient history but yeah. I think that I think that this as we go into this, it'll start to explain why it is accepted and why it is happening and why, you know, the more that you get, the deeper you get. But it uh, it's fascinating to me to to uh, to think that it's it, it it's horrifying and fascinating at the same time that that it yeah. is just so accepted. You know, now, do you remember when you you're talking about the beginning, how you got into truth? You said you start going down it, you look at certain things and you got put you get put in a box and. You don't know which direction to go, and it kind of seems too big, and you kind of just, you quit, right? right? You just kind of put it down. Well, the whole reason behind that, and the, the very the secret trick that nobody wants to talk about, is everyone just throws this information at you. They just throw these blocks of information. They say, "Look at this. Doesn't this make any sense? Why aren't you? Why isn't it making sense to you? Why are you stupid? Look, all this is right here." And the reason why it doesn't make any sense to anybody is because it has to go in a precise order. 
if the truth is not given in a very precise, precise order, the subconscious will reject it. Because the reason being is our, our conscious hold on reality. It's very, very important that we hold a, a very sp specific um, way that we view reality. And when that gets disrupted in any way, um, most of the time negatively, the person will reject it because it's a very uncomfortable thing. If someone wants to say to you, um, hey, did you, did you know that, you know, our planet's not the center of the universe and it actually rotates around the sun and somebody didn't know that, um, they might freak out, wouldn't they? Yeah. They might, they might totally, because you just blew their entire reality of the concept of maybe their religious view of how they, of, of how they perceive things. And so instead, if you work up to different truths in, in, a, in an order, and, so, and, and the way you do that is by identifying very, very noticeable um, problems that you can prove are not the way that we're being told. So you think of it like a spark. How do you get the general masses to want to look at truth, right? You only have this tiny little segment of society who most of them are considered crazy because anybody would consider another person crazy if they didn't have the information to look at versus another, like... Back in the day, if someone was to, you know, hundreds of years ago, if someone was to tell someone that there were giant lizards all over the planet, you know, some that were tons and, you know, the size of buildings and were tromping around the earth and attacking others, they would completely laugh in your face. They would think you were a complete lunatic right. and you'd probably get locked up and maybe burned at the stake, right? Right. However, if you take that same group of people and you put them through – a course of learning where you show them bones and you show them evidence and you have them firsthand see all those things, all of a sudden it doesn't seem so crazy anymore. What they what they first viewed as the most insane thing they've ever imagined takes on a completely different light once they have something to fill it. It's like you have to have the information to backfill to see. And, and, and furthermore, even if someone gives that information to you, it's often not enough. The person has to then go back and then look for themselves, and go in the in the in the in the actual order that they kind of feel comfortable with. Right. And not everybody is totally comfortable with just going at light speed. I mean, if you're if you're going up on this 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 um, ladder of truth, I like to call it, and you're learning about ancient history, and you're learning about, you know, like the pyramids, and you're learning about all these things, and then you get up to something like um, some of these elite families and some of these some of these really dark things that have happened some of these very Satanistic aspects of what has happened in our history, you're, you're most likely, a lot of people are not going to be ready for that kind of thing. And they're going to, they're going to stop and they're not going to ever look again because you've scared them. You've kind of thrown too much at them and too fast and they don't understand really the concepts of what's really gone on behind the scenes of history that we don't get, we don't know about all of these secret societies that, that are right in front of our faces. When you drive down the road, and you see a sign for like the Mas Masonic Lodge, mm -hmm. Freemasons, and you see all these things all around us. They're, they're secrets that have to do with all these things in our past that we have no idea about because the secret, the secrets of our, of our history have been guarded and kept only within certain select people because of how powerful it really was. Wow. And as, as insane as that might sound, if you think about men like, um, the first 13 presidents of our of our founding fathers of our country were all Freemasons. Mm -hmm. All right. You, you can't you can't see that and not and not see a correlation in that. And every time you look closer, the more you see that these men and all these men throughout history, like Einstein, and um, you go back into every single invention that was ever made, and all these men were part of these secret societies. All of them. Uh -huh. And it's not what we think. It's not like these general people that just start tinkering in their basement and they all of a sudden figure out what light is that's that's not how it works these are the, it's like these select areas of society have been have been kind of hiding there all along having inventions and then kind of and kind of passing a lot of these and most of those people those secret societies became government and uh -huh. became the ones who control our planet and it was decided a long time ago and of course, most people think this is a conspiracy theory, but the more you look, it will blow your mind. It was decided a long time ago that the truth was way too, it had built up so much 
right? So many lies piled on top of each other that it was so big at that point that it simply couldn't be told. Mm -hmm. It had to be hidden. And that's what that's what happened. The truth was actually hidden and um, tried to be destroyed by let me talk about these forces of the eagle. In, in, like you were seeing in that video, mm -hmm. the truth has actually been um, attempted to be destroyed so that, that the truth would never come out because it, it would it would kind of challenge the very paradigm of what we think really happened in our history. And as a, there's a famous quote that always gets mentioned is history is written by the victors. Yeah. We, so we whichever quote army quite a bit on here. Yeah. Whichever army is the biggest and wins the war writes the story. So what's the real true story, right? Mm hmm. Exactly. Okay, so let's let's do this because the listeners probably are, are are thinking, okay, they're they're laying it out and they're saying, okay, we we know about ancient history or we know that there are these uh, secret societies and they, but they don't understand. the The big question is this, and it always is this: is why, what for, what are why are these why what are these and and you guys have been talking about an eagle and an, and, a, and a snake, and what, who are the eagle and the snake? What does the eagle and the snake have to do with? So let's, let's do that. Okay. Let's, let's lay out who the eagle is. Let's lay out who the snake is and how this, how this all correlates to these secret societies. And that is not an easy thing to do because there's so much there that we're going to have to try to compact it in. Okay. So let's think for a moment that you mentioned we have to try to go in an order because we don't want to freak people out, right? Okay. We have to try okay. to go in, a, in an order that makes sense here. Okay. Um, so you have this symbology that's been hidden on these flags and crests all across the world. Mm -hmm. And you can see a correlation directly between those those flags. Anytime you see an eagle or some kind of a, um, a compilation on that with a phoenix, you're, you're seeing, you can see a direct correlation to a warring empire mm -hmm. every single time. And I wish I had some great pictures to go along with this right now as I'm talking. That's okay. But we can, you know, I mean... all across the world, things like the Roman Empire and all the way through Spain and who came and conquered the, the Americas, every time you see this eagle, every mm -hmm. single time it's this warring eagle. And of course, eagles are beautiful creatures. And you better remember, symbology simply is just what was taken on by those who wanted to show a message. Right. And it. And an eagle was simply just a, um, I am, you know, the ruler of above. I am the Lord of, of everything above. Of high, I command right. above and I, that's what, that's what the eagle symbology was, you know, attacking from above. It was, you, there was no one above an eagle, right. you know, so the eagle, that was to them, it was like watching from above and versus this snake, this, this serpent figure, yeah, right, right. right. Who's the and, lowest of the low. Uh, and the really interesting aspect of it is the first thing to lay out there is, and it's a very difficult thing to to take if you, if you don't actually go and look. And I encourage anything that I say, I really wish people would just go online to just look and search. And one of the things you mentioned that was really important, you said I actually learned something from YouTube. Mm -hmm. Highly encourage people when they're looking for truth to understand that the truth is going to be hard to find because it's it's been deliberately made hard to be hard to find because of what we're going to kind of explain. Right. And if people knew the truth, it's so powerful that it really does change your life. You know, in the movie, The Matrix, where he's handing them a red and a blue pill, when you start going down the, that road of truth and you take that pill, everything changes. Your view of reality completely changes. The activities you do change. The, the, the perception you have of yourself and the universe and everything in, in the history changes. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, that's why they, they 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 talk about being like an, an awakening aspect right okay so the first thing to mention is that so many things in our history have been completely inverted to the opposite meaning of what they really are and i mean literally everything it's it's kind of insane when you actually go and look you, you say i don't even know what to think anymore because it's all backwards the idea of um, looking at like Friday the 13th as being as, as, as like a really evil number when and you actually learned that, that it used to be like a sacred number of like the creator of all type of universal number. Right. So you start seeing all these correlations and one of those really important correlations is the snake or the serpent or the dragon. They're all part of the same thing versus the eagle. 
or the, the double-headed eagle was a variation. Right. The Byzantine eagle, the, the Roman eagle. Those are those are all part of these variations of these the symbology that's been held by these elite two sides that have essentially been fighting over how you know human human civilizations are going to be run. So if you in, in to get back to that to understand what that really means. You say, well, what evidence is that? That sounds crazy. Go look in places like Egypt and go look in places like Mesoamerica down through South America. And you see this correlation of all of these structures all over the world, right? These things that are that exist, that we're told these giant pyramid structures, right? In Giza, the largest structures on earth. We could still not build those today. And they have the most unbelievable alignments to things like understanding the size of our circumference of our planet to knowing star constellations all over the, all of the, our galaxy. Right. But beyond just that, we have to understand that, like I mentioned before, there are these great sparks that you can kind of lay out for someone and say, look, here's some evidence. This, we're being told that this is a certain way. I'm telling you right now, it's not. And you can go look and you'll see. For instance, in our history books, everyone around the world is taught that pyramids, like in Giza, were were made to hold pharaohs. Mm -hmm. And it made, it made total sense for everyone. They're saying, well, people are so obsessed with their gods, of course they would, and of course there's that term, right, gods, mm -hmm. of course they would um, build these massive structures to just hold them, because that was their obsession. And so that, that idea stood fast for many, many years. And then you realize, when you start looking, you go into the ancient evidence, and you say, has there ever been a pharaoh, a pharaoh found in the Great Pyramids? And you realize it's all a giant lie. There has never been a pharaoh found in any giant pyramid. Mm -hmm. All of those structures were not built for pharaohs. Right. And they all have massive underground tunnels and, and all these things that are connected to ge ge geometry alignments to specific constellations like Sirius and Orion and all of these different things and we're being we're being told all of these these kind of misdirections so that people won't look into it because if someone says they're made to house pharaohs and you don't look into it you're gonna be satisfied and yeah, you just and you're never ever gonna question it the mo most until, people won't until someone it. maybe comes along and says Actually, they never had pharaohs in them. And you go, well, then what were they for? And then your mind gets blown when you start learning the truth. Right. But because the, the... when you learn the truth about why they were built, mm -hmm. you learn that it was a lie. And you learn that it was not built using human technology, essentially. Right. And so the thing, the thing is, is that most times, excuse me, nobody will look into it. Nobody will question it. Nobody question. Right. They won't question the, the, the mainline, mainstream uh, word and uh, and then when somebody does say that you know what there was never a pharaoh in it and guess what happens to the guy that says you know what there was never a pharaoh found in it all of society will ostracize that guy and say that's hey, right he's crazy you're crazy because they've said that there's pharaohs in these for forever and that's what they were built for why would you question that what you know and then and it's it's whatever this the secret society or whatever whoever's trying to hide the truth does a very good job by marginalizing any truth seeker and yeah so if so if you look exactly and there's just so it's been it's been put in this little box where people it's the second it's not mainstream it's not part of the general idea of where we we've considered history to be whatever's been told by our top educational people right and when we start we start to realize that that has not been told correctly and that there's this very defined educational st structured system that's been put in place where if a teacher was to actually want to divert from that they could get fired right they could, they could completely lose their job if they didn't teach what was sp sp specifically in books that were given and so where are all these pharaohs pharaohs buried well nearby at the valley of the kings it mm -hmm. says it right there the valley of the kings you just go look it's massive temple and that's where all the that's where all the pharaohs were. Most of them were all in this one area. Mm -hmm. And so then, so then, let's get back to it, right? The, this whole eagle and serpent thing. Well, go in these go in these pyramids. Go down in these tunnels and some of these inscriptions. You're going to see snakes and serpents all over them. And you're going to start thinking about maybe the serpent hasn't been told to us correctly. And you start looking at things like religion in the world and how 
there are still these very spiritual um, ancient aspects of religion. If you try to go back as far as you can to, to some of the more pure writings that were they were spoken about and kind of preserved, you see places like like India, in, in the t- t- Tibet, with things like Hinduism and Buddhism, and places like that. That's and you see that that kind of spiritual ancient wisdom from the ancient days that was still preserved. And of course, how they perceive um, their religious aspect is is kind of with earth and with the universe. And it's not about like worshiping some guy, right? It's not about it's, a, it's not about control aspects. And that's the only place, one of the only as- places on earth that it's still left. That used to be what was all worship in the, in the Americas with all the Native Americans. And that was all destroyed, right? right? The Catholic Church came in and marched in and put their, their big flags down. And and now you, you go to a place like Mexico City and you see the ancient the ancient city, the one of the most ancient cities they have. Um, Denoctalon is like just buried ruins and then you just see the giant Catholic Church sitting over it. Right. So um so this this idea that, that getting back, these ancient religions that still exist that talk about this 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 side of our knowledge and our consciousness, right? Mm-hmm. What do they worship? They, they still worship the snake. They still worship this, the snake and the serpent. And all of these ancient cultures from Japan and China all the way down through India. And so you start to see a correlation that we've been told snakes and serpents are evil and bad our entire yeah. time. And you start to say, well, how far back does this go? And this is where you start to see, you think of that term going down the rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Well, this is how far back it goes. All the way back into what people think is just a myth with the idea of Adam and Eve, right? Mm-hmm. Which, and then they actually learn, well, Adam's real name was actually Adamu. And these names that we, we, we think of, there's m- much more to them if we actually look. And in the story, there's a snake who tempts Eve mm-hmm. with the knowledge of good and evil. And in that, in, in our modern text, we're told that, that that snake is evil and is, you know, like the devil and all these things. And, and that, and that the, the other side of it that we, sh- you know, we're, we're being protected is the side of good and that God doesn't want us and, and it wants to protect us and, and hold us back so that we won't, um, you know, it'll be like, it, it's seen as like a positive aspect that the, the serpent is seen as a negative and, and the, the God figure right. is seen as a positive, but it's the complete opposite. Like I said, everything has been inverted. Mm-hmm. The snake figure is simply just a symbolic aspect. What we must understand is a lot of things that have been written and a lot of structures are simply a symbolic gesture to show something. They're not actually their literal meaning. So in this case, there wasn't really a snake. It was simply, so you say, what was it then? There's a snake and there's, there's this God figure. Well, the snake was this being named Enki. And you mentioned him before, mm-hmm. and you say, well, "I don't know who that is, right?" Um, well, it, it gets it gets really easy to understand if you lay it out in, in a specific way. If you go back, this is how easy it gets. If you go back to the earliest writings we have, go go back to Iraq, and Syria, and and down through Egypt, the Middle East, essentially, right, where all the war conflict is. By the way, I want to remember that. Once you remember that. If you go to these areas and you go back to the earliest writings we have in, in mankind for our earliest knowledge of, of actually writing out, because that's when you consider a culture to be advanced. Right. When they have written written language, they have they reached a point where – and you can measure that by the amount of character values they have in their language. That usually will tell you how advanced they become. So if you go back to our earliest writings we have, mm-hmm. the purest form, they're, they're known as cuneiform writings. They're writings that were, they were like stamped into these, these created – almost like basically they're like rock so we can so we can have them forever and be preserved because paper paper burns uh-huh. uh, a lot of these things will disappear right and so if we go back to our earliest writings these cuneiform writings like the atrahasis mm-hmm. and the numa elish yes. the epic of gilgamesh and there's so many others and there's scrolls like the dead sea scrolls and all these different these different ancient writings are the oldest that we have and there, several of these are being kept in in the um, in England, in Britain, in the library in the in the library there. And you can just go look at all these, right? Uh-huh. These these are the earliest writings we have, and they tell a story. All of them tell the same story, or or just different variations of or pieces of the same story in, in different aspects. Right. But they all tell the same thing, and yet we're willing to ignore that 
because nobody knows about it. Isn't that weird, right? Yeah, it's it is very strange, and I think I think what it's what's so fascinating about it is that all of these, all of these, uh, all of these modern faiths, like I mean, we look predominantly here in the United States is Christianity, and when you look at the story, the basic story behind it, you look and you say, okay, and I, I we don't have to speak too much about this, but you look at the that the first or the Old Testament, right, and you say, okay, the God that the the God figure, the God that's in there, the one that, the one that is uh, jealous and he's very warlike and he's very, uh, you know, you 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 either it's his way or sure. the highway, right? Hold on, yeah, right, right, and uh, and he's he's there. You don't you don't really see much of of the snake, right? Like only a little no. bit in, in in there, and then and then all of a sudden, as the New Testament comes about, it's like a totally different God, right? He's he's totally different. He's not warlike. He's very forgiving and very loving and very. Uh, uh, it's it's more. It's it's very. It's much about grace, right? And and you see a lot of. Uh, it. It's it's very uh, lopsided, if you will, and I, I don't want to give too much away about your talk because I like later on I start to put things together for myself, but. Um, because that's the, that's the that's the closest religion that I can relate to, right? But when you look all around the world and you say, okay, well these ancient these ancient faiths, like Christianity, is actually fairly new compared to these older religions that were, you know, Zoroastrianism exactly. and, and all of these other ones. And and uh, this this eagle and snake uh, die this 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 battle it's it's epic because it it takes us to the beginning and. And everything seems to be built off of that. Now it takes us to the beginning, but there is seems to be much more than that, but behind the scene. But uh, the well, let's go there. Okay. Let's let's dig let's okay. dig in. Okay. So we were you you were just led into that really well. So we were we were talking about these our most ancient writings. Mm -hmm. How are you supposed to know what the truth is? Like you said, all these different these different versions of the same. You know, Christianity has been rewritten in all these different versions. One time, one time it's an angry God, then it turns into like a. It's it's complete because you essentially have had different rewritings of the same, of the mm -hmm. same work, and so the only way to know the truth is to go back to the earliest ones. That's that's it. That's all it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Go back to the earliest writings you can and see what the way was supposed to be written. When you do that, you go back to places where you find these the first advanced people known as the Sumerians mm -hmm. and the Sumerians were located in what's known as Iraq right now. And it's no coincidence that all the instability that's going on there right now. So in, in Iraq, the Sumerians, when they did all of their, all of the agriculture and they had the wisdom of the stars and all the things they wrote down, they wrote these stories. They wrote stories about where they came from and, and, and what their history was. And they wrote about, epic things that occur, great floods, great disasters. And they wrote all these things down, including the story of how they came to be. We came to be, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, keep, we keep asking that question, like, you know, where do we come from? Are we just these evolved apes here? Mm -hmm. When in reality, you see that it's much more complex and the truth kind of blows your mind. And you, you see that these, these ancient cultures called their gods, right? Mm -hmm. Every single, every advanced, every culture across the world has had gods and deities. Right. And yet we ignore them like they're fake. Like they're all just some whiz, whimsical imagination. Like I want, I hope it rains. So I'm just going to pray to the God of rain. And that's what that means. That's just, it's just rain. And, and so it's just going to happen. That's not what it means at all. All the gods were real. They all were, many of them had, had similar names. Many of them had different incarnations and many of them, um, went by this different names for the same being. So we got to understand it doesn't get that complicated if we want to think about it. We have these terms that are very polluted. One of them is called Anunnaki. It's a very polluted term because people were rejected because there's a lot of controversy around it. It doesn't get that complicated. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you try to be objective and look at it, it goes like this. The Sumerian people, the oldest advanced culture we have on the earth, the name they gave was that for the Anunnaki. That was the name they called them. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. It wasn't like someone in their basement who came up with this 
science fiction name. The Sumer, the, the most ancient people we have, they call their gods the Anunnaki. And right. what that meant, meant is two different translations, either from from heaven, those who came from heaven to earth. Remember, head of heaven is simply a metaphor for uh-huh. the stars beyond earth. Or those who were sent from Anu to earth. Because right. Anunnaki, K-I, is the name for earth. Right. Earth is not really called earth to other to some other beings, it's actually called Key. Okay. So remember the name Enki? Yep. Well, his name means Lord of the Earth. Right. It just, it's just his name was Ea, and so his name just became Lord of the Earth. And so, who are these these gods? Well, we have to understand that history is a lot more complicated than we've made, we've been led to believe, and it's um, a lot more incredible. That might be happy to a lot of people because I know that when I learned the truth, it was like. Um, it wasn't that I wanted it to be a certain way. It, it was that when it was a certain way, it was so incredible that I actually took me a long time to accept it. But when I realized it was real, after looking at a lot of evidence, it just blew my mind. Reality really is stranger than fiction. Um, and so the idea is that there are advanced beings. There are advanced civilizations in the stars. You know, our our solar system is actually pretty young. And there are... You know there are more there are more planets that that have that are habitable for life. They think, according if you if you look at if you look at everything scientifically. Of course, we can only see so far out in our solar. We can only see a tiny glimpse of what's actually out there. But we, they think there are billions of worlds that, that can harbor life just within our galaxy right. alone. And you know when we look out in the night sky, you're seeing you're seeing millions of of suns and people say stars, but they don't really connect the idea that that is a you're looking at you know, light years away, a sun in a, in, a, in another solar system yeah. that is that is that light is just reaching you, and the idea that 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 by the time that light even reaches you, it might not even be there anymore because that's taken that long just for that light to reach you. But we take it for granted that we call them just stars, right? Shooting right. stars, stars. Most of the time, if you even mention to someone that it's a sun, they're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Or how about the idea of where we even are right now? The concept of being on a planet that's flying through the solar system and through the galaxy. Nobody thinks about that. And this that's why this truth that I'm telling you about has been so easily hidden. Because we're living in, like the book I wrote called The Illusion of Us, we're living in this great illusion of reality, of what, it's kind of like a manufactured reality yeah. based on this everything that we've kind of been raised upon and everything that's happened in our history that's led up to this by this battle of the eagle and the serpent. And so going back, these Sumerian gods, it's simply the idea of an advanced god coming here, an advanced being coming here, wanting to tampering with the DNA of, of, of some species that was on its way at some point to a higher place, right? We can think of those as Neanderthals and Denisovians. Different, different um, evolutionary species on the planet going along on their route that are Sending millions of years to try to get somewhere, and here we come. We have what's known as the missing link in our evolution. Right. This point where our brains just jump in like a thousand years or something. We're just they just double in size. Right. And the, right. and the scientists are looking for it, and then we're going to find it. And that's essentially because of the idea that we were genetic genetically manipulated. And and again, I'm kind of probably pushing myself a little far here. Cause a lot of people will think that's crazy unless the, until they actually think of look at the idea of scientists right now are consider more than 80 percent of our dna junk dna right they say right. they don't know what it is right. and they call it junk dna because it's it's foreign dna and the idea is look at us we're not covered in hair are we no are no. we adapted to anything on this planet no. if you threw somebody outside they would die instantly yeah. We have no adapt- adaption to this planet. Go look at every single niche of every species on this planet. You think that there's just this giant leap from a hairy ape to something that doesn't have any hair at all that is somehow it, it's supposed to then like go clothe itself over a course of a tiny period of, of right. evolution with no help at all. Yeah. No, it's it's a it's it's a genetic altercation with a, a leap. Have That's you, why we are so different. Have you and have you seen the talks uh, from uh, Lloyd Pye? I think his name yes, is Lloyd Pye. Yes, I love Lloyd Pye. Okay, Lloyd Pye, big yeah. time. Yeah, and he, he talks about how uh, he he does a very good uh, explanation of that. Like he breaks it down and says, you know, it's, you look at the hominoids, 
That's and, right. And then and and then us and everything about us is inefficient. The way that we walk, the way that we, you know, way we carry ourselves, the fact that good we, stuff. The yeah. way the fact that we don't we're not covered in hair and we're actually frail, but it's this right here that it, it sets us apart from all of, of the others. And it's, it's because we have that, uh, reasoning capability and that the fact that we, uh, we, our brain is capable of, of, of operating at greater, uh, at a greater level. It's just that we're not utilizing it yet, you know, and he, and, and, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing to think about. Exactly. And so we are using roughly 10% of our brain power. Yeah, we so, have 90% left yeah, of so, what we could actually use. So that's, um, so, uh, so go ahead. that, uh, that, so we got to be clear on that because that's, that's a, that's a, that will be a, that's a, t a sticky situation, right? So you got to say 10% at only one given, at only one given time. So like, are yeah. we, we utilize our full brain, but we're not utilizing it at a hundred percent all the time, right? Like it'll be like, Oh, we'll shift here, 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 but it's still only, we never exceed 10%, right? And, but more importantly, our, our, um, the exponential growth capacity potential we have for utilizing more of it is, is, is incredible. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's, it's like, it's almost like a that, giant though. neurological system. That's just being very underutilized. Let's put it that way. There's, and there's a reason behind that, that I think you'll get into, right? There's a reason behind it in the idea of, of it's a it's a suppression. We right. we are um, we are children of men. We are children of mankind. We what that means is we're not we're not even really like fully like humans really walking around. We're like these children walking around. We we fight over petty things. We kill each other. Mm -hmm. We we do these silly stupid things that that an evolved species at this point should not even be doing. And you start to you start to wonder how we got here to this point, and we are almost always blamed on just some evolutionary barbaric trait. But in reality, you start to look at the symbology behind something like the eagle mm -hmm. has driven good. many many civilizations to be barbaric through war. So we we see our history, and we say, well, this war happened. No, that needed to happen, and this this happened, and that. Well, another million people died over this this many years and whatever it was. And we accept that as just being okay because the idea of nationality, nationalism has been thrown down our throats like go be go be triumphant for your country so you can you can you can fight for us, so you can you can come back for us, right? And if that person doesn't come back, they're a hero because they've died. And if they do come back, well it doesn't really matter how many people they killed because they were fighting for their country. Meanwhile, so was the other country that was fighting, right? Exactly. You've been brainwashed into not even considering who's the other person on the other end of the gun. Uh -huh. Do you have any kind of a conflict with them? Have they, have they, they maybe punched you or hurt you or put you in a serious dilemma where you, where you feel like your life is threatened? Yet we're, we're just murdering each other based on a whim. That's insanity if you look at it objectively. It is Yet insanity. our culture has been, has been pushed into the idea that that's okay. And... I'm telling you that once you start seeing the, the the significance of the eagle behind every single war and culture, every single culture that was based on not knowledge, let's say they were based on the acquisition of resources, uh -huh. slavery, and in war. Every time you had an eagle. Yep. Now here's a fun correlation. I I missed the timing though. I'm sorry, but okay. we just had St. Patrick's Day, right? Right. This is my favorite holiday of truth, I like to call it. The holiday of truth. St. Yeah. Patrick's Day is St. Patrick, right? Everything's been inverted, by the way. Be careful with those saints. Some of them were actually uh, soldiers of the church, mm -hmm. um, like St. Patrick. So Soldier Patrick, um, this story goes in, in, in St. Patrick's Day that the, um, the snakes were all kicked out of Ireland, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a fun one? So everybody yeah. drinks. Yay! Get those snakes out of Ireland. <laughs> it's it's so silly. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, and then and that's okay because nobody has any knowledge of nobody you questions know, local biomes snakes. and species and yeah, <laughs> nobody questions. Wait a minute, there's snakes in Ireland. When? In wait a minute, there's no snakes in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. So what are they talking about? Well, like I said, 
many things that we consider in taking a linear form are actually metaphors. Mm -hmm. So then you start looking and you type it in and you say, what is it? What do snakes mean? Really? And you see that they mean pagans. Mm -hmm. Druid. Like, and druidic. Yeah. Druids and pagans. You're like, you're like, okay, so they're kicking this, the pagans and the druids out. Then why are they calling them snakes? And then you see places like Stonehenge. And you start in that, which is directly connected to the pagans and druids. Mm -hmm. And then you start connecting Stonehenge to places like Egypt and all over the world with this serpent knowledge. And you start seeing a correlation in, in the fact that the, the serpent or the dragon worshipped all over the world. Go look at Mesoamerica. It mm -hmm. will blow your mind. Look at Go on our channel. We have an Anunnaki series. We go over. And we we really. It's about Mesoamerica essentially. Mm -hmm. We show all of the the pyramids and the statues and all of these the gods that are shown from North America, United States, Mexico. You know, in the, in the Yucatan, right down through Central America into South America. Right, thousands of miles, culture after culture, Aztec and Maya and old Toltec and all these different cultures, and they all had this serpent knowledge. These, these dragon heads, right? These plume right. dragon heads. And then all the Native Americans had these big headdresses they wore. And we used to, we used to think that that was based on like an eagle or a bird, just based on the celebration of a bird. And then you start, you start to kind of put it together. You say, well, the feathers are all different colors, so it's not, it's not one bird. It really doesn't look like a bird anymore, after, actually. It looks like a plumed serpent. And then you start looking at all the statues that came out of the pyramids. They're all serpents with a plume on them. And you start saying, well, what is a plumed serpent but simply just a dragon? Right. And right. there's where your connection comes. There's this dragon, snake, family side. Their yeah. symbology is simply just the dragon and the snake. And they're – and they're, Quetzalcoatl they're, both mean winged serpent, don't they? What? Go ahead. Kukulkan and Quetzalcoatl, yes. don't they both mean winged serpent? Yep, and and they're and they're they're actually representations of mm -hmm. these gods that that we're that we're talking about, and but they're specific gods. What we understand is there are gods who represented on the side of the eagle and the, I mean of, of the yeah the eagle and the and the, the phoenix and the eagle, mm -hmm. and there are those gods who are on the side of of the dragon and the serpent, and they fought constantly because they hated each other, and they wanted humanity to be a certain way, and you have two sides basically like polarity if you look at it the the dragon and the eagle and the dragon and the serpent side was always consciousness and knowledge and in and, and universal knowledge of consciousness stars farming uh, that was how their that was the model of their of their civilization every single time all over the world you look look at the structures and what they symbolized this serpent dragon from mesoamerica all the way in into Egypt and, and into Mesopotamia in Iraq and Syria, all these places, you'll see the snake and the, the serpent and the dragon every single time. And then, as a contrast, you see this this eagle and the phoenix, this this battle between. And of course, the Me the flag of Mexico is my favorite example. It shows this eagle sitting on top of a cactus, tearing apart a snake. And when you what you really see is you start looking at history with these conquistadors yeah. of Spain. Yeah represented by the eagle you see what it really meant was the eagle conquering the serpent and yeah. you say well is, is there any other flags that show like uh someone stabbing a, a serpent or a dragon or an eagle attacking a, a, um, a snake it's everywhere all over the world uh -huh. the romans have a, a, a famous yeah. statues with their, yeah, their the eagle, eagle attacking the snake to the flag of mexico to these flags all over europe and it's this correlation of this ancient battle that's gone on so okay and most of humanity doesn't even know go ahead so let's so okay so we've already we've we've established who the snake was but we haven't we haven't given the name of the eagle yet for most people and w i think what we should do is kind of give the backstory to why those two are fighting so much and okay. uh, i mean uh, we i know who the for our listeners i mean i'll let you lay it out who who the, who is the eagle what was his name Okay, so mm -hmm. the eagle was known as Enlil, okay. and both these names simply mean they're they're different aspects of Lord. Lord of the air, they right? Essentially, mean, yep. So Enlil is Lord of the air. Mm -hmm. Seems very fitting to have an eagle for that, wouldn't you say? Right. 
and and Enki was was Lord of the Earth or Lord of the Sea, the oceans. Uh -huh. And so he was he was this serpent, this snake, you know, swimming or flying. It, it was it, it was just the symbology for the two sides of the family. Now, so real quick, real quick, because yep. when I when I think about that, and you know how you said it kind of came to me, but uh, you said it's the symbology of it, and and Enlil. Enlil spent a lot of time not on the planet, if you will, right? And Enki spent more time here with the people, right? You get this, yes. And so, so, so it, have, go ahead. I was going to say, so it would seem that if Enlil is elevated above the planet, then he would be lord of the air. And Enki then, because he spent more time here, he would be lord of the earth. According to well, it gets even it gets actually even more simple okay. than that. Okay, fantastic. Um, they're they're considered so. Think of right now we have this royalty, we have this strange royalty that still exists on Earth. Mm -hmm. After all we've gone through, we still have kings. Right. How right. odd is that, right? It's very the queen, odd. right, is a great example. We have the queen who still sits on her her throne right. over in England, and she's part of a bloodline. She's mm -hmm. part of a, a royal bloodline. And it's very important that you can see this correlation all throughout history with these bloodlines. And that is who has ruled mm -hmm. for good reason. They're part of a royal bloodline. And so we simply ask, well, who are these these gods? Well, they are royal bloodlines, kings and all those things. That's where it came from. Mm -hmm. If you look in, in, in religion, in all these – the Bible and all these places, it says kingship was lowered from heaven right. because it was. That's why Anunnaki means those who from, who from heaven came to earth mm -hmm. because heaven was considered beyond our earth. It was the stars. And so they, we have these, these royal kingship gods who Enlil is, is higher ranked than Enki. They're brothers, but he is, is 10 points higher than his, his brother. He outranks him significantly. Okay. But Enki is still is – still, they're, they're both very important, but – Enlil, is, Enlil has more more control, but like you said, Enki is the lord of the earth, and he he spent all, a lot of his time here. Meanwhile, Enlil could care less about the planet other than just the resources that are here. You see, to him, it's just it's just the it's just the it's the dualistic aspect of of what is the the real worth of something. Is it re the resources of the elements there, or is it the beings that have consciousness, or all these things? And he. He, they, Enlil has seen humanity as being a mistake, a blight here, and does and, and wanted it removed. That's why we've had so many disasters and war and plague and all these things. They're not what we've been made to believe. Much of it has been manipulated, and it's it's so it's so scary to look at if you don't actually go and read these cuneiform cuneiform stories talking about what happened. Mm -hmm. Basically. Enki and Enlil are these two brothers who are fighting the entire time about how they wanted humanity to go. And the reason that there's this hatred is that Enki secretly genetically designed us to be gods. And he didn't tell Enlil, his brother. Mm -hmm. Remember, Enlil already hated us. He called us beasts. When this whole idea of genetically manipulating us was completely something he was against. He didn't want anything to do with it. He didn't want our our Denisovians and Neanderthals manipulated with their with their DNA because he saw us as beasts. Th yeah, no. So that's symbolic. Now let's think about that in Christianity. So, beast six six six. Yeah, and not only that, but now think about it as just just even in in, in the Garden of Eden, right? In that in that yeah. little let the so everything. Now if we're if we're a beast, now think about how a beast operates, like a lion or a tiger yeah. or or a deer. Right. You got you operate by tooth and claw. Right. It's 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 uh, survival of the fittest, even in the jungle. That's right. Even in paradise, it would be still survival of the fittest a, amongst those those beasts. Right. There's no there's no rationalization. There's no concepts. There's no perceptions that are formed. You have no knowledge. It, it's all about exactly. instinct and and operation that. But you're right. but as a as purely innocent, you that's. That's how that's how you operate, right? Now you don't know any different. So that that was the, so then so then if we look at the the symbology of the snake offering that knowledge, which that would yeah. be the genetic modification of us at that very point in time. And there you go. There we have it. So I just wanted to talk about that symbology a little bit, maybe it relate because that kind of helped me. It's 
Yeah, and it's right in your face too. Here's a mm-hmm. great one, right? Okay. Enki was our was our master geneticist. Okay. He was the one who, with Ninchita and and Ninma, they were all part of it. You know, the mother of mankind, ISIS, mm-hmm. now the terrorist group. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, everything's been inverted. But Enki was our master geneticist. Think of it that way. Today, our model, our, our modern medical industry, every single symbol that's shown is called the caduceus. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, it's just like in our face everywhere. Mm-hmm. It represents our double helix DNA coiled as snakes Mm -hmm. very very clear it's right in front of us it's the telltale sign of our master geneticist kind of the the signature left behind it's still there and and that's because like we let's get back now so we had these secret these genetic modifications that were done that were not that were not supposed to be done we were turned in we were given their dna and their gifts and when our evolution was jump-started millions of years there's your missing link Mm-hmm. That's why things seem so strange with these jumps on Earth between these different species, between Neanderthals and humans, Homo sapiens. That's because of the, of this this tinkering. Now, when Enlil found out that we had been given these gifts, and we were and we were given the gifts that they were, these beasts were given the gifts of the gods. He promised to give us kind of like immor- slavery forever, kind of an eternal slavery. And, and the way they did that was to kind of send us off all over the earth and give us all these different languages and then segregate us by hatred of race and through war. And now we have all these countries all over the planet with these kingship hierarchy systems that still exist, haven't really gone anywhere, where people are pitted against one another because somehow they think that they're um, like bad people or – less pe- less or so of a person than than them and then so all these countries and all these people are pitted against each other all over the earth right with the, the, the these eagle flags like look at the united mm-hmm. states there's your right. best example right there the here's a go back to the founding fathers of the united states these these secret societies of men that wanted the united states to be a free place it started as a place that was non-war well, they, they had to break away from the tyranny first, but they wanted to be a place that was free of the religious constraints that held them back. Free speech, right? Mm-hmm. That's why the the Constitution was so important in, in getting in getting all you know our our independence here. But then the eagle ended up eventually being able to take over. Right. How do I know that? Go look at what the founding fathers originally intended the United States to have as a symbol. It wasn't an eagle. It was a turkey. Yeah, turkey. That's right. And so then it became an eagle after, and we became a warring country. That's the, that sign throughout the flags all over. You can follow it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Anywhere you see that, you'll see that their history was, was a warring history. And that was the telltale sign left. And so this um, Mesoamerica is the, is the best example for this. It doesn't get mm-hmm. any better than Mesoamerica uh, in South America because you have – these dragon and serpent statues all over these cultures, right? And it's probably because Up, it was so yeah. recent. I mean, it's it's very recent it, in history as far as as far as I mean, Egyptian and all that. And but but Mesoamerica was less than you know they didn't get wiped out for you know for what it must have been four hundred years ago. Well, it was, it was that, and also they were all all conquered by these flags, right. flying eagles. Right, right. Like it's just such a great example. It's it's mind blowing. Uh-huh. So picture this. You have these cultures that are set up from the United States down through Mexico, down through Central America, and down through South America that have all these pyramids. Mm -hmm. The same 52 cubit design seen in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Same design. You see this, and they're all worshiping the stars. They have advanced astronomical knowledge, the Mayans, of calendars and things that we can't even even perceive today. Mm -hmm. They knew all of these amazing things. And then they got conquered by the eagle. These these heroes that we consider in our in our, our history like Columbus and, and Cortez and Pizarro right, right. these the trifecta I like to call it right these three men that were hand chosen to by the by the powers in in Spain to to conquer um, very systematically these three areas and they did it in such a way where it was so brilliant they knew exactly all about they're gods because there were gods too. Remember, there were gods fighting. Mm-hmm. So they knew that there was this idea that 
all every single one of these cultures were waiting for their gods to return because it was a situation where the snakes the serpent gods had created these civilizations and then moved on because that's just how things went mm-hmm. and then the eagle would come in and corrupt it and so up and down you see you see these these be- beautiful civilizations that then got corrupted from blood sacrifice and became warring empires and then became corrupted by the these conquerors mm-hmm. and it was a, it was a very meticulously and planned thing so when cortez lands in mexico he's greeted because they think he's the god quetzalcoatl mm-hmm. yeah. okay because because they think that he's their snake god and then and that's the only reason why he was able to eventually conquer and just dis- destroy um like the odds of a thousand to one men that they had mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about going into cities that had at that time, more than 200,000 people. It was, it was actually one of the largest cultural centers in the Western Hemisphere. Right. And they were able to, able to, able to conquer it in just a few hundred men yeah. because they were able to trick them. You think that was Cortez's idea? You know, the church knew all along how to do this. Mm-hmm. And they knew that they send a bunch of soldiers into attack, then they'd be slaughtered. So they'd have to do it very smart. And so they pretended that they were the, the snake gods, and then they annihilated them. And, and you, 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 it's like everything you're saying is, uh, people will question. Well, well, how would you Please convince? Hope they do. Yeah, no. How would you convince just those soldiers to go in and wipe out uh, all of those people? And what was the promise? The promise was gold, right? I mean, everything was. Every it was time. all gold. It was all about gold. That was it, what. It, that's what you're taught. I mean, you're even taught that in school that oh, and you're not even. You know what? What's the the funny thing about it is that you're not even taught about the how inhumane it was, or even you yeah. even the the thought behind it. it doesn't even cross your mind whenever you're a kid. You're like. Oh, the, Pizarro! Uh, 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 they conquered they, the tribes yeah. in, the, in the indigenous savages. Yeah, for gold. That's what they teach us. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. It, for gold. Oh, okay. And you accept it, and you don't even think about why. You know, like, oh, it's just gold. Uh, you know, I don't know. That's just okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, that's that's how they do it. Uh huh. It's it's this written version of history that's completely manipulated. Mm-hmm. It's not right. The age of the pyramids is flat out wrong. The age of the Sphinx is flat out wrong. You can see areas of the Sphinx where there are water marks from when the, the last time you can you can you can tell when water ran there. You can mm-hmm. actually geologically date that based on it. And you can see the age of it. It's it's plain as day, and yet they refuse to accept it because there's this giant controlled aspect of our history because if we knew the truth, it would just crumble religion most religions and and all these doctrines that have controlled us all of these and, control mechanisms yes exactly that's, that's what it right. is so uh-huh. someone like let's take two example like this there's so many examples of these conquerors conquistadors now i'd just like to bring up a couple of them we're told that um columbus was supposed to sail west for a spice trade route to india that's all we're told and uh-huh. that's what we're made to believe and yet if you really look when he landed in some islands south of bahamas all they did is take slaves, and and then and the, the islanders had gold from from down in the Dominican, and they just they immediately forced them into slavery and had to tell them where the gold was. Not much of a Western route there. They they continued south and just kept working these gold regions and took several trips back to Spain, never even reaching Mexico. Mm-hmm. Look at the distance from Cuba to Mexico compared to like the Atlantic Ocean. It's nothing. And if you look at the routes Columbus took, he never even tried to go west. Right. Because they were never they were never trying to go for a Western route. They all the entire time it was about gold. And it was about conquering these cultures. The church knew that these cultures were, were all this culture of the of the snake and the dragon. To this day, the Vatican owns more Mesoamerica and relics from the United States than anyone else in the world. They have vaults. Yeah. Go look it up. It's it's all there. There are vaults where they have all of these um, these skins with all the ancient writings from the, the Native Americans and all these all the different things that they left, they confiscated them during when, when they conquered and they owned them all. And yeah. so it makes sense. You have, you have Columbus that never actually even went west. They just were continuously working gold. And then you have Pizarro, who the first thing they did when they came here, these riches, he killed he killed Moctezuma. You gotta remember these these cultures considered their leader their leaders to be like demigod gods, mm-hmm. and they followed them. So if you were to kill one, that would be a pretty devastating thing to them. Um, so Cortez executed like in a movie, 
just not with a gun, but killed killed um, Moctezuma. Meanwhile, down in South America with the Inca, where really the heart of the gold was, um, you have you have Pizarro who captured the the ruler of the Inca, held him ransom just like Moctezuma for a massive amount of gold to fill an entire room, and then they killed him. Uh-huh. Same thing. We're talking about heroes here. Right. And when they when they were done conquering um, North America, Mexico, and down through South Central America and South America, something like between half a million people or more were dead. Yeah, and it's it, it's funny how how people do look at them as heroes in in history and and uh, and for what like I it's it's a uh, it is it's like topsy turvy world that that. That it is. you wouldn't think of that as being history because I mean as heroes because it wasn't like it wasn't like the Incans and the Mayans were t- they were they weren't uh, pillagers or coming across the waters to 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 rape and conquer Spain. No, they it that they weren't that you know so so why do it then? Yeah, right? so why do it right? Like that's you're not protecting it's not it's not to protect yourself right at, at all and and I, I'm interested to to hear what our listeners think about that as well. Um, continue on because it gets it gets it, people will people will say okay well these two brothers they are at they they don't they're in a disagreement a, a brutal disagreement and there's got to be more to that right there's got to be we've got we must they must have a dad and they must have children as well now the and it, because you're saying that they're part of a royal bloodline, these 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 two, and you also stated that that Enlil was here for the resources. So what resources and why? Why why were why were the Anunnaki here for? Uh, what did they come here for? There's there's definitely some good stuff there to talk about. Um, mm-hmm. you you mentioned it right. What is this obsession that we've always had here? Right. Ever since our earliest time, if you can if you think of what we consider um currency. It's always been gold. You know, when there's a gold rush, people, people, nobody thinks about this, right? right. People rush, rush over to get gold and they're digging it up. And I, I'm someone that actually has prospected a lot of my life. It's, and I can tell you firsthand, there's something about gold that's unlike any other element you've ever been near or found. It's um, different. And if you can tell that by the, the amount of people that have ruined their lives over, it wasn't just about money. Right. This lure of gold has been, it's like in our DNA. It's like part of us. Because it's this idea, you have the earth, and we're just, we're a terrestrial planet. We, we're in, we are, um, we're a, 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 mo- mostly a rock and metal planet. You look at like planets like Jupiter, it's a gaseous planet. And because of that, we have a lot of resources. And it just so happens, if you look, that Earth has the most amount of gold of any planet in our solar system. And here you have this planet with a plethora of life, you know, with countless species on it. And you have these Neanderthals and these Denisovians that are kind of going along their evolutionary path. And by the way, we need to get to the idea that we are, our neighbors are all around us. It's much more complicated than just not seeing them. It's a very, it's an, the idea that we're alone is just so silly. So we have to move past that and to, the, to look at the, the fact that you have this planet with um, more gold than any other planet in our solar system, and you have these, these beings that need to acquire. Well, why? What is so important about gold? Well, it's, it's kind of funny how we perceive gold. We, we put it on, it's shiny, and it's pretty, and we, we like it because it's rare. That's kind of where it ends for us, right? If you ask someone why they like gold, that's about – any, what anyone's going to tell you so right yeah i mean like okay so gold gold is if we want to if we for our listeners gold is what it's, it's malleable <laughs> it's easy to weigh you can you can uh you can you can get it it can be unified standard units it can be uh it's it, it's it can be graded according to purity <clears throat> and it's divisible okay so you can carry it it's portable um now, well, there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, too. there is a lot more to it than that. That, but but most people will just be like, well, you know, because it is it is a it is a a a, a a a a a good question for most people because they're always like, well, why do we, you know? But there is a lot more to gold than what than what uh, 
than what most people even realize today. A lot more. Okay. And it's so much more that it actually kind of unlocks the answers to mm -hmm. all of it. Yeah. Much when people when people look at history of our of of the truth, they try to look at what's our ancient history, what's the truth about us, all these things. They realize that there's so many pieces that are all connected that it's it's massive. Mm -hmm. It's huge because of the idea of well, what is gold? Why is gold so important? You know, it's this element on the periodic table represented by AU. Well, what else? Well, if you have a ship sailing across the ocean and it's got a, some precious cargo on board, it's got gold and silver and copper and all these things on board, and that ship sinks in a storm, and then divers, you know, hundreds of years later are able to then uncover that those um, those remnants of that ship, mm -hmm. they're going to find that the copper and the silver have completely discolored. discolored. They've they're yes they've been severely affected by the salt water and yeah. the oxygen meanwhile the gold hasn't nothing's happened to it it's like you've it's just been sunk the day before why nobody thinks about why mm -hmm. nobody ever sits down and wonders about why that is because gold is eternal gold is the only one of the only elements if not the only element that will never break down it is forever. What kind of qualities would an element like that have mm -hmm. for maybe like a being? What kind of qualities um, would an element have that has um, the the most the most the highest reflectance values um, and these insane heat value? That's why in space, almost all of the things they use in the in the um, shuttles and stuff, it's all gold. The visors are all gold right. because it is this insane element that there's really nothing like it. The closest thing that can come second to the properties well. of gold will be silver. Hey, isn't that weird, right? Uh -huh. Oh, these things that we consider the most important in our in our in our economy for things that are rare. Um, these are the two most important elements for not anything to do with aesthetic value, but for like um, metaphysical things, things that would be um, affecting our DNA, affecting our biological systems, affecting our lifespan, affecting our neural network. That's what gold and silver do. They're they're not. We've been very misled on the on the real properties of things. Meanwhile, human beings for thousands of years have been just slaving for gold, and then it goes to some vault somewhere, right? Just goes in some right. giant vault somewhere. Here's the most amazing aspect of it: money, like dollars, is all just ones and zeros in a computer. It's not real. There's no value to money. You can put as much paper in you want down. You're not going to have a lot of money there. That's why all of these major em empire countries of the world who, who control most of the politics have these massive vaults of gold. Nobody ever thinks about that, really. Nobody ever considers why that is. Now, here's another mi mind-blowing fact. If you do research and you looked into what this family has been at each side of every war, who has been the controller of the eagle? Their family name all throughout these these countries has been Rothschild. And you can follow that family throughout history. There's a famous quote that I hope everybody goes and looks this up. Amschel Meyer Rothschild, the, the, the mother of, of the, her children, all these sons that became bankers all across the world in, these, in, the, in the most important countries. She said on her deathbed, right before she was gonna die, she said, if my sons did not want war, there would simply be none. And you just and you start to think about that quote, and it explodes your mind. The, these wars have just been orchestrated by these banking elite families, based on the idea of wanting to fight over resources by the eagle and the serpent. That's all it's been, and it's been this fight all along. Um, and so look at the United States and look at all these places, and that's where you get that that war mentality of of kind of controlling everything we perceive. Yes. Um, okay, so go ahead. Okay, so where was I a second ago? I lost my train of thought there. We were talking about gold and why it was so Yeah, thank you. Thank you, gold. All right. So to this day, that the family I just mentioned, the Rothschild family who's been controlling all these warring empires, who's been the family behind the Rothschilds. I mean, the family behind the Eagle all throughout all these places. That family has been called the Rothschilds. And if you look, number one, their name means Red Shield. And you mentioned how they keep the world in a, in a flight or fight survival mode, uh -huh. which the red, the red root chakra is called that for a reason. 
they protect that red root shock in humanity to keep everybody at a lower level, right? But the most amazing thing of all beyond that is the idea that this family who's been in, who's been at every side of every nearly every war, the gold mines Major all war, yeah, over Africa, sure. mm-hmm. they still determine the daily price of gold. I mean, if you want to talk about some mind blowing facts, start start to put these things together. This is not fantasy any longer. These are things that have been held back from the general population and kept in secret societies because of how powerful it is. And now we're at a certain time where we're just kind of trying to scream to the world that they can hear us. And people like me are trying to tell others and trying to get as much information as we can because the truth is so powerful it'll change your life. And unless you can actually look at the evidence and go see for yourself, much of it will seem, unfortunately, like some kind of fantasy. But our history is incredible. And Mm-hmm. Once we understand what, why we've been kind of, we've been we've been kind of slaving for gold all along for these gods, because gold has so many of these important these important properties, and right now in the world, we have places like Russia, mm-hmm. who want to break out from the dollar and go to gold, mm-hmm. all, and and there's all these countries that are talking about it right now, and it's been something that's been talked about for a long time, and I don't want to stay too current because I don't don't usually like to do that, but. It's incredible to see right now that you're seeing this major switch to gold. It is it is a shift. And after everything we talked about with gold, how the idea that the dollar and that secretly that's a, a fake currency with mm-hmm. the real value being these vaults full of gold. You know, the Federal Reserve is not even owned by the United States government. Right. The United States, the people in the United States don't even know that they don't even have any money. That that there's not even the government doesn't even own any money. Right. The Federal Reserve is a privately owned bank by the Rothschilds. It's it's it, there's it just every single time you look for a connection, it's right there. And and you look through these branches of the fam, families, which simply run different areas. Mm-hmm. The branch of the Rothschilds who run the United States was the Rockefellers. Mm-hmm. So you start to see that correlation connecting every single time, and that's why we've been at the mercy of them with politics with you know, healthcare with war, with all these things, because if you control a country's completely economy, if you can like hold it hostage, you can make it do whatever you want. Yeah, you control their you control their economy. You also control their media. You control everything. Everything that's fed that that's right, and that's you, what happens. You have you have you're you're feeding them what you want them to know, and and that's yeah. it. Once you get that, it's it's pretty much a lock. You're you're winning the game. So, so, so the reason behind gold is it, it it's great like it, it, it just like Incredible you said properties don't like anything else right so we it, it's a one of the most efficient conductors of, of electricity right and that's uh, right there are some speculations as to like monatomic gold right like that's when it's right. broke down and how how it, it 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 helps to uh almost regenerate your body or help your body run more efficiently your brain operate more efficiently and and all of these things and and so yeah. it, it most people will look at that and say, "Oh, you guys are just new age hippies that are that are thinking about this this stuff." But now, when when somebody gets that, here's the deal: like when somebody gets that idea in their head, they should maybe they should think about they should step back and say, "Wait a minute, why am I saying that? Why would I even care what yeah. they what they really uh, why why they're even concerned about it? What because if if say you and I were that that we subscribe to that idea." How how will we hurt anybody? Do you understand? So why would you then demonize us? Why would you They're marginalize us? Who protect exactly? The false narrative. So this is it. It's because it's because they've been predictively programmed to to protect yep. it, and they fight with their every bit of their being to do it because it's so foreign to them. And and it's a, remember, it's attacking their reality. Remember, it's I said how their reality. That is, the and, beginning. And so exactly. And so. I find it funny that people will come out so uh, fervently against any type of new idea and or uh, that that might even have, you know, that might hold water that might if you start to actually research and start to think about it and actually go back and look at the the uh, the cylinder scrolls of, of, of the Sumerians and you look at these cuneiform and you look at all this stuff and you start to you start to put it together, you might just uncover something for yourself so 
if you find yourself out there saying, oh, well, this is this is absolutely ridiculous. These are these people are just out of their mind. Well, maybe what you should do is actually take a look. And that's right. And, and, and you might scary what you find. And you might you, you might encourage you might be able to find pockets throughout history of things that are that don't represent 100 percent. But that's that you have to that uh that that's going to go along with anything whenever you're going to see uh compartmentalized and and different uh types of tribalism and certain things and maybe maybe people like uh people instead of traded cattle for uh, in their as as their currency and all that stuff well sure that's going to happen but whenever the, the predominant currency for uh, throughout the last 2000 years has for major westernized or major uh uh civilized nations has been gold there's a reason behind that and That's so right. you might want to you might want to look at that and and then start to say okay well let's let's find out why and that's a great place for me to say something. I want to jump in. Mm -hmm. You say, well, give me some more evidence. I don't, I, this is too mm -hmm. crazy. All right. How about in the fact that in South Africa, uh -huh. go look this up. They've, they've been hiding this very, very carefully, but if you go to South Africa, you can, you can genetically find that we have some of our earliest lineages, lineages right, back, right? right? right okay. Right. Uh -huh. If you, if you go look, they have identified thousands if not up to a million of these ancient mining sites oh, just yeah. oh, dotting yeah. the country all over the place. We're talking about these circular built mining sites who have been that have been dated to over a hundred thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. If you look at our narrative for how we are perceived during that, and even if you look at the narrative for how we're perceived at the age they give us at the pyramids. These things just don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Why are primitive people surviving off the land, gathering berries and hunting? What use would they have be from hard mining with gold in the ground 150,000 years ago? Exactly. And yeah. so you got you to start asking these questions. We have to we have to look at um, why why that happened. And if you look at the pyramids, people were considered to be primitive people that moved all those stones on hand logs. Uh -huh. We to this day, with every single construction equipment we have, we could not build the Great Pyramids of Giza, not even close, uh -huh. not even, not even a fraction of that. But we ignore that. We ignore that, and we and we don't even hear these things like pharaohs weren't really built there. Why are they there? Uh -huh. Why is the the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid of Giza pointed towards the Orion constellation during the winter solstice? And why is is the queen's chamber pointed towards the Sirius constellation? Is that perhaps a feminine and masculine? reason uh -huh. is there perhaps some king lineage to those places or no let's just think of a really easy way to look at it these these people now there's no pharaohs built there right uh, buried there right? right they built these gigantic structures pointing to these specific star constellations for no reason they, some guy woke up in his bed one day he's like i think we should sacrifice thousands of people to, to do this this would be really uh -huh. kind of fun right? No, everything was done for a very specific reason. It's not what we were made to believe. The, the pyramids are much older than we've been told. The Sphinx is much older than we've been told. You can see watermark lines on it. You can go right into our timeline when rain fell in those areas. The thing that hold us, holds us back from the truth is, is kind of the fear of the unknown and the fear of challenging the paradigm of our reality. And as long as we can kind of have some courage to want to know the truth, because Here's the thing that's the most amazing about the truth. When you kind of look, you're you're like, oh, I hope I don't find out that you know we're just like this horrible species that's just, you know, I hope I don't I don't find something negative. I don't want to perceive myself as less than I perceive myself now. But the opposite couldn't be more true. What's so wonderful about finding the truth and the reason why it's so guarded, the reason why it's so held back, is that if we knew the truth of who we really were, we're like these gods who have, with amnesia. We wouldn't do all the mundane things we do. We wouldn't be in the slavery mentality we're in today. We would, we would, everything in our existence would be different. Everything we do would be different. We would interact with each other differently. We would, we would, our activities would be different. People would know how to things, do things like growing our own food and cooking and all these things. And we have, we're in this very strange reality of reality where it's like a set of the Truman Show where people, 
people are in this strange mixed up sense that their purpose is on this planet flying through the galaxy with billions of stars all around us, you know, on this evolutionary track to expand our consciousness and further our species. And what are they doing? They're just watching TV all day and going to bars and getting drunk and going shopping at the mall and then going to some sports event somewhere. And there's no conscious expansion there. That's the very point. Yeah. I call, I call my book, the illusion of us, the suppression and evolution of human consciousness, because mm. There's all these activities, all these foods, all these, all these mentalities we've been giving and social um, kind of constructs since we've been children going through kind of boot, boot camp school. Mm -hmm. um, we've been put into this paradigm so that we'll never, number one, we won't question, question the truth. Like you said, people will be ridiculed and they'll be made fun of them. They, they won't want that feeling. And so, and two, um, we've been kind of forced to believe that we're just a simple evolved ape fighting here and that we've reached this stage somehow of our own whim and that we deserve to do nothing mm -hmm. to kind of like destroy the planet and just kind of gain all this material junk and then not leave anything behind and it's such a sad existence if you look at it objectively when in reality we should be spending our time trying to further our ourselves or our species learning as much as we can trying to trying to change our lives but we don't do that why because we're living in a giant illusion mm -hmm. created so that nobody would it's as crazy as it sounds it sounds just like a movie and it really is it's like the idea that we've been put through all of these different means to keep us all in a manufactured history reality so that everybody will think the same thing and then if anybody was ever to ever question it they would immediately be ridiculed it's almost like a perfect system. It is a perfect system, and it does. You do find that immediate, immediate ridicule and immediate. It's okay to. It's okay to uh, to to question it, though. It's okay to question people that are questioning question it. it. But we should always be questioning everything, and I think yeah. that's kind of my that's my motto. And I and, and I I don't uh, I don't I don't uh, I don't take kindly to people that are that. Are so set in their ways that they don't uh, that they don't question it. I mean, it's not that I'm mean to them, but I don't. If they're going to ridicule me, it it it's almost it's an offense. You don't have time for that, and I don't have time for it because, like I said, I'm not hurting anybody, and and it's something that it speaks to it speaks to me for sure. And I, and I yeah. start I feel more comfortable as I start to find more answers. And it's it's all it to me. My 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 where my truth seeking came from was what. Early on in my, I, I grew up in a very religious home, right, and and in that, the the nature of the story in itself, and the nature of of the study and everything that I saw, it was still very uh, very peculiar to me, right? It makes sense, did it? Right. Well, it, it like I said, it was very uneven throughout yeah. throughout the Bible, right? And I was like, this is very, uh, it's uneven, and. Uh, you know, there was still a lot of love in my home, you know, and, and things like that as far as for my mother and, 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 yeah, of course. but, but that, that constant, uh, quest for knowledge stuck with me. And as I, as I grew older, I started to think, man, this, uh, there's gotta be more to this story. And that's awesome. <laughs> the, 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 the scary part of it is this, is that as a child, when I, when I would question things, and uh, this is this is kind of the narrative that that would get uh, pushed to me is that one day, very soon, the you'll everything will be foretold to you. Everything you'll an unveiling will happen. Disclosure but, is definitely coming soon. Right. But first thing will happen is a big uh, what's the word a big uh, a, a falsehood a. Uh, deception is about to be yeah. unveiled. And so, so when, when I was a child, they'd be like, you know, you, the, the deception will be unveiled first and you will, you'll find out that that is not the true God. Right. And it was, I was yeah. like, what? Well, and they're like, well, it, and what they told me in the church was that everything will be explained with science and yeah. uh, that will be the, that will be the, um, that will be the deception. And then the true God will come after that. And so, it's one of those things That's where you're exactly like, how it went. huh? That's exactly how it went too. And, and, and so it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's still terrifying to me, right? Like, 
if this war does continue, right, and this war between the two brothers continues, which it is, right? Well, that's the good news, though. Uh-huh. We okay. should we should definitely talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, maybe we should because that's that's where that's where we need to go. I think next. Okay. Okay. So what's we need to understand a couple things here. Okay. The first thing before I lose track of this is, um, everything means something, and we talk about things have been kind of rewritten and we're not really praying till we think we are anymore. When you're saying we got we got to think about what things really mean. When you're saying Amen. Uh-huh. No one really looks at, well, there's a God named Amen Ra, and when you're saying Amen, you're, you're just you're just speaking to that God, and but nobody knows that because because that's been lost, and it's everybody says Amen, and they don't really know that they're actually speaking to this certain this certain deity God, named Marduk. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now, but we we got to get back to this idea of how does this all get determined, right? It's not just this is not as chaotic as it seems. Let me explain. The way that these royal bloodlines, the way that they're allowed to kind of govern these places that are considered free will places, which is what Earth is. We are a free will place. Nobody can own this place, and that's why there's so much turmoil here. Because if you can't own it, then everybody can kind of have a hand at it and kind of move it to different directions if they wanted to. Um, and, th- and that's the reason why it's been – kind of so it's so moved around and the, the way that that is in our history there are times when there are these big enlightenment moments these periods of time when civilization is much more peaceful and then it goes through a time of tons of war and all these different things and there actually have been these periods of extended peace and knowledge that are much longer than we know but we're just simply unaware of them because some of them occurred long ago and disasters destroyed them in places like that and one of those is named atlantis and mm-hmm. and, and if you look at places like um, philosophers like plato we consider F- plato to be one of the greatest philosophers that we have and yet he spoke about he spoke about um atlantis in the timius and critias and we ignore it because we think that maybe he was just joking or he right. was using a metaphor right right, right. Yeah. so getting back to this well what does that mean well these different time periods on earth Human civilizations have been allowed to get to different stages of consciousness. And then they've been literally wiped out and sent back to where they started. That's why we, we are a species with amnesia. There have been many authors who have talked about this. Graham Hancock has talked about this. Many authors have talked about the idea that we used to have vast knowledge and used to be much different. And we lost it all right. from vast right. cataclysms that, is, that happened on Earth. Every religion on – every major religion on Earth talks about these floods that have occurred. And we all think they're just they're just fantasy, but there are actually there's tangible evidence you can see in places like the North, the Pacific Northwest in um, Idaho where you can see these massive canyons of water that have been released from some of these floods and they cannot be explained by other these other geological processes that they're giving like like ancient lakes and stuff. So the way that these different enlightened periods and these different um, stretches of human timelines go is it seems to be the, the, the cuneiform tablets where they talk about this is based on these zodiacal houses. This should start to make a lot of sense to people if they start to consider all of the obsession with zodiacs in our in our society, the obsession about when you're born and what it really means, and the idea of um, different places in space and different energies and different things like that. Aligning with different constellations and planets and stars, we don't think about that stuff, mm-hmm. but they do. And the way that they determine how this um, things are going to be run here is is based on zodiacal houses, zodiacal houses in in our galaxy, which means there are these huge periods of space that you can look where they measure where we we, we consider we're in a certain area, right? The area that we're in now is called the time of Pisces, okay? And the time of Pisces has always had a negative polarity assigned to it for this time period. Mm -hmm. So when Pisces, like like a a swinging clock, right, Pisces comes into play, it's a negative polarity for this planet. So therefore, those gods like Enlil, who who are negative, the eagle, who are a war and negative polarity, they want to rule, they can. And Mm -hmm. that's what's happened. Over, for, for thousands of years, we've been in the time of Pisces, and we have had this negative polarity run by Enlil, and he's been allowed to do whatever he wants, and that's why we've had just utter turmoil, just millions and millions of people dying. 
it's for over, over these wars. And meanwhile, what are we entering right now? Right. And over, right. It's funny that you say that because we're actually becoming the the least violent that we've ever been on this planet. And we're, we're but getting closer. They don't closer. think that, though, do they? Right. No, I mean, no. And we and we truly are becoming like let, there is less violence now than there was yeah. prior, even though we're still warring. But it still seems to be. Th this is what this is what kind of scares me, right? Is that is that when t what usually happens whenever a king uh, yes. moves on is that he's 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 got a one last grasp, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I know uh -huh. you're, you're, you're you touched that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And at the end of a zodiacal period, when you're switching from a negative polarity to a positive polarity, I'm sure you know what that means. Mm -hmm. We're going from the eagle symbology of war wartime to a time of the serpent and the dragon mm -hmm. right this great time of aquarius that we're coming to which is the time we're actually supposed to fully align with aquarius around 2025 or 2026 not that mm -hmm. long from now from now until then is what's known as the transition period until the aquarius now like you said when you have these zodiacal houses with rulerships that are coming to an end you think they're just gonna like you know pack up and be like okay Thanks a lot. I'm sorry. Yeah. Everything we did. Um, you know, good luck. It's it's more of an idea of maybe not wanting to let go of power and maybe, or even wanting to do whatever you could at the last minute. You know, kind of the last dying ditch efforts of a dying man or a dying king. Kind of, mm -hmm. you know, attacking something that you know you're not going to win. The idea that we are a boiling pot of collective consciousness that is spilling over right now during this time when we're reaching. Everybody is changing. We're all changing at different levels. But like you said, our collective mindset is here is much more peaceful than it used to be. Mm -hmm. And they have to incite, more, they have to do more and more actions to get us to do war. And it's becoming harder and harder to want us to do that because like, because we are changing and we can't help it because we're, we're, we're ascending into this new time when we reach a deeper aspect of our galaxy closer to this, the galactic center. Which is why the Mayans talked all about that with their calendar ending. Mm -hmm. It had to do with you go down to Chichen Itza, El Capitan, the, the main most famous um, pyramid down there. Every single stair level represents a different level of consciousness oh, in humanity. Right. And of course, people don't really know that, but that and so we're at the top of that pyramid where the Mayans have said we're now reaching a stage that's called the universal consciousness. And so when this zodiacal house is ending and we're moving to this positive side when the snake and the dragon will be able to finally take take charge and bring back um, consciousness and wisdom, before that happens, we're going to go through a very messy phase because everything that's been constructed and created during this last several thousand years to falsely create this reality based on how we perceive things, oh, we war, that's just normal. No. Money, we should be slaving um, 40 to 60 hours a week and then have a tiny fraction of free time left in our, t our day. That's insanity if you look at it objectively. Everything we do is, is insane. We have, this, we have this entire model of society that's based on lies after lies after lies of everything. So to get that to, to change to something new, it's going take um, it's going to take a lot of uh, challenge, a lot of challenges. Yeah. And I think we're in the middle of that right now. I do think that too, because I, and the reason I say that is because I see more and more people and, and I see more and more people actually questioning things. First of all, you see more people Everything. questioning authority than you ever have. And, and to me, when you question authority, that is actually a, that is a sign that there is that, that, that those people that are, they don't take the narrative as it is now, Something's wrong, right? Right, right. There's and and they want answers. Now mm -hmm. that's all I can say. Well, I say that, but um, uh, like politi the political environment around around the, on the earth. To be honest, you're seeing a lot more populist candidates rise to power. Um, Chaos, and, right? Things are just not happening the way they want them. Right, to and they and they they want to take their power back, and and yeah. so the uh, this this controlling elite the this this controlling family uh, is doing Families. everything they yep. can to hang on and and they'll they'll shove puppets in front of your face and they'll they'll say that they're gonna they're gonna give you that back but eventually people will will see through those puppets and see through that that those those giant lies that are being shoved in front of them 
and they'll demand the change. And I think that and that's... it might not be as, as happy as we might perceive if people were to find out the truth of some of these wicked things that happened. Right. Now, I don't want to talk about them right now, but if they did, they the the, the first thing that people are going to turn to is going to be anger. Right. And, that's, and that's, yeah. Yeah, that's so where go I'm ahead. going. So I'm, so I'm trying to set it up here to, for the scene is that it's... You've got this last, this king's last dying grasp to hang on to power, and at the same time, you have an an unveiling and 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 a these truth seekers, a, a large population of truth seekers that, yeah. as we see, we'll see more and more people become, uh, at least start to question more authority, and yeah. they're not going to like the answer that they've been told. And they're going to, there's going to, I, I, in my opinion, I think there's going to be a giant clash and then it will, it will be a rebirth uh, into the, you got the, it. Right. And you nailed it. Yeah. It's, every death is always followed by rebirth. People mm -hmm. had this idea that we're all just going to like annihilate ourselves and that we're alone here and that there's mm -hmm. nothing even part of our future. We got to understand that we are important. That's the, that's the first thing to remember. Remember I said the truth is actually the opposite of, of like a negative, um, almost like a sad thing. It's uh -huh. it's the opposite. We are actually, we're actually creator gods here that have been given incredible gifts and we don't know it because we're at a stage where we've been so suppressed by so many things that we don't really know how special we are. And that specialness is why there's so much opposition against us. If you take a being, we are a mammal. Mammals are emotional beings. Most mammals on earth don't really fight much. Uh -huh. There's there's altercations during during small little events and they go back to what they're doing meanwhile hum humans are just fighting all the time back and forth uh -huh. and the idea is this we are a, an emotional mammal species so if you take that species and you throw it into the opposite and you throw them into the complete opposite state that they're in you're going to keep them in a state of almost like suffering right they're in a state where they they um that's why people are so depressed and so codependent on so many things for happiness because they're, they're looking for something. And so many people are looking for that, that thing that just tells them that what something that make them feel better. And, and it's right there. You're right. Just so go, go look, you're right. So uh, this, this ties into my, the, the whole theory that I have is that you just said something that, that if you can keep people in a constant state of suffering, they're going to look for relief somewhere. Right. And yes. so if we look back in, in history, who kept the, who kept those people in a constant state of suffering was the very people that they looked to f for relief. Exactly. So you should look at the church, right? Now we look you at the state, that, right? right? You look at the the state has has come in and said, "Look, no, we're your God, we're yours." And what you said earlier really makes sense, and it's and, and it's kind of my my motto is that we are special. We're beautiful, intelligent yes. beings meant for something more than just killing yes. each other. And it doesn't mean that you have to, it doesn't mean that you must uh, throw yourself on the sword and martyr yourself for your neighbor or for your country or for whatever it is. But w the thing is, is that you need to find the power inside of yourself as an individual and make yourself better as that individual and seek knowledge and seek those questions. And, and it, what you, is very empowering what you said to it's, it ties it together. And when people start to see that, look, when you're looking outside for that relief, that relief isn't coming because it's not going to come from the state. It's not going to come from the church. It's not going to come from that because it's all meant to keep you down. That's it, right. And, and it's, it is the, it's the idea of the kingdom of heaven is within uh -huh. that, that. The idea that we've been told all these little, these little religious sayings and all these things that people like have this concept that heaven is a real place mm -hmm. and that hell is a real place. And all these things, these very clever um, illusions that aren't real. And we, and we realize this whole idea of heaven, it's just a state of mind. And the idea that heaven is within us is that all these massive glacial cap mountains and all these things that we try to conquer in the physical dimension, the third, the third dimension, we don't realize that the, the great feat is within us. Mm -hmm. It's within conquering the darkness that exists within us that we have to try to navigate to find the answers to who we really are to expand our consciousness, because that really is where the great journey lies. Very well said, Matt. I, I appreciate your time tonight. And I'd love to have you back on again in the near future. And we can even get, a while, Jim. I'm going to, I'm actually, uh, I'm going to purchase your book on Kindle uh, here shortly and uh, I'll consume it. Um, and then 
can probably read it a couple times and that way I can even get better knowledge. Um, but dude, seriously, it's been a great talk. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed and we, it. and we really only touched on just a tiny bit of it, to be just honest with you. There's yeah. so much more there. There's so much more to, to, to even to be discovered going forward. But it, uh, it, it gives me great hope that you like people like you, people like Gerald Clark, um, uh, many, there's many people out there that, uh, that are seeking truth, you know, at, at least questioning the narrative, questioning what's, what's, what's out there and, uh, and, and doing the best to give your answers, you know, doing the best to give what you can come up with, because there's a lot of stuff to, to, to search through and a lot of, uh, muddled junk out there. And, and it's, uh, it's refreshing to see it. So, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I wanted to, when I wrote the illusion of us, uh -huh. I wanted to give people somewhere to look with so much, like you said, mm -hmm. so much information. I tried to write that book as a stepping stone guide so that if you were, if someone was trying to cross, cross this body of water of knowledge and they have these stepping stones to step on, it's going to make it much easier. And, and these stepping stones go different directions and you can choose which direction you want to go to based on the idea of, well, I'm going to learn, I'm, I'm there's here's some facts. Um, and then here's some other things that lead further down our story. And I really want to encourage everyone to then go look into those things. Cause that's really how you're going to find the truth. When you look for yourself, the truth really will change your life. Thank you very much, Michael. I appreciate having this discussion with you. Thanks man. Um, and we will, we'll, we'll definitely keep in contact and, uh, I'd like everybody to, can you plug, can you plug your book, plug your, uh, your YouTube channel for me? And, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I create a lot of, um, movie video, mm -hmm. video stuff too. I, um, I, I have a lot of fun doing that kind of putting video and pictures and, and, and sound together and some narrative. So I have a lot of stuff that I've made also besides my book on my YouTube channel, which is on, um, which is Matt LaCroix. Mm -hmm. uh, which I can spell that it's M A T T and then you can do Matthew M E T T H E W and then L A C R O I X. I have a channel on there with all kinds of really cool content. Please find my, my book for more, but more importantly, even beyond all that, just seek the truth for yourself. There's so much out there and never limit yourself to the truth. That's, that's the advice I can give. Well, thanks man. I really appreciate it, Matt.